But you saw this uh, Jerry Lewis interview? It's fascinating. Isn't it great? What happened to this guy? I don't know, Joe. I met him once. Was he actually, nice? Actually, I met him a couple of times. He was, actually, he was actually nice to me both Was times. he? Yeah. I was asking that sarcastically. He was, yeah, he was nice to me twice. Wow. I took, I've never heard of him being nice. You know who's the only person I've ever heard of him being nice to? He was nice to Maria Menounos when she interviewed him, and I think we all know why he was nice to Maria Menounos. Same reason all of us are nice to Maria Menounos, because <laughs> we like Kevin. That's right. No, yeah. Jerry Lewis, I met him at a roast once. I wasn't on the roast. I took a picture. He took a very affectionate picture with me. And then I did a roast that he was on, and he was he was nice, and I said goodbye to him, and he was very friendly. Does he like fellow comics? I think that might have been it. He knew I was a stand-up, and, and I had a, I took a couple of photos with him. He was fine with it. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he wasn't a dick at all. Uh, but again, I, I've heard enough interviews with this, or about interviews where he's just not nice to people. Yeah. And it's like, dude, there's no reason, unless this guy was being a total twat, there's no reason to be this, this shitty to an interviewer. I think, and Travis... Unless he was totally joking and trolling him the whole time, I don't believe he was. I think, and Travis and I were talking about this before, and it kind of put the idea in my head. I think that he views himself as so good that when... That he holds other people to that standard. So if somebody approaches him, like an interviewer approaches him, like this interviewer was not a great interviewer. But he was he didn't do anything to deserve the rudeness. No, he was just not good at it. Have you ever thought of retiring is, is an answer of why? You know, it's not the answer to that question. But from what I read, yeah. he was annoyed before any of this even oh, Of happened. course he was, like, yes. He didn't want to do this. Yes. He was complaining about all the people in his house. <laughs> he was on like a two day break from his tour. So he went into it not wanting to do yeah, it. Yeah, that, that's probably what it was. He didn't want to do the interview. And he's one thing you got to love is he's beyond giving a fuck if people are happy with this interview. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. He doesn't care. He's a incredible legend. So, so who invited them in? Probably his people. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's Hollywood Reporter. They're, they're doing this like they interviewed 10 people, 10 entertainers over 90. And he goes, and this so people like they probably like, yeah, white, right. and like, yeah, like, I mean, there's only a certain amount of people they can pick from. He also, by the way, how many, why, how, why there's so many people in this house? Why isn't it just, oh, they probably had to have miking him, lighting, camera. Yeah, you see how many people come in here just for like. Yeah, you know. that's what you got to keep it a minimal. You go to a guy's house, you keep it a minimal. He probably doesn't love also being the over 90, like, let's talk to the few people over 90 that are still alive and working. He doesn't want to be this sort of, like, it's notable that he's still breathing. You know, yeah. he's not being recognized recognized for his great work anymore. He's being recognized because somehow he's not buried in the ground. Yeah. So he doesn't he can't like that. But I agree with Sam. I think that, that he doesn't notice this interviewer was terrible. He's a bad interviewer. Yeah. Oh he's awful. He got he got thrown off his game like yeah, but, so after fast. the first question. He's a bad interviewer. He was thrown off immediately. But I think when you interview a guy who's that legendary and he's that much of a blatant cocksucker to you. Yeah. Here's the problem, because you're afraid to call him out. Like, I think you should have called Jerry out and go, why are you being this way? Jerry would have ended the interview. Like, I guarantee if he would have goes, you're, you're being really an ass. He would have went, get out of my house, and that would have ended it. But he barely even reacted to what he was saying. It was like he was getting short answers, and so he kept trying to rephrase questions and stuff like that instead of, instead of and we'll, we'll play it in a second. But he didn't, like, react to his situation at all. He panicked. Yeah, he, he, he did. didn't reevaluate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When, when a guy on that legendary status, and, and very few people are as high up on the ladder as Jerry Lewis in the comedy world or in entertainment, it, it throws you because you know if you, if you, you figure you're fucking up, like, I'm, f I'm blowing it, I'm when, fucking up, and then if I say something shitty to him and call him out, I'm going to get in trouble, like, and I'm going to be humiliated because I've called out. It's a weird position to be in, even though I think you should have called but him when out. You it's not like he's, li like, when you work for The Hollywood Reporter, right, and you're there to interview him, you have a skill set, too, or you're supposed to. So when some guy like that who's an old man at this point, is obviously, like, toying with you as if you're an idiot. Like, you have to at least be able to step up and, and show that you have some level, of, like, there's some, you have some reason to be there. He's treating him, the interviewer, like he's got no, like, you don't deserve to be talking to him. He was just it. trying to salvage it, and, and it wasn't working, and uh, maybe a minute in after a few, because sometimes you can win a guy over, he'll be a little cunty, and then you can win him over, like, maybe he'll go, he'll relax and forget whatever he was mad at. I get what he was trying to do, but then he's like, he's got to just go, this guy's an asshole. I think that's what he was doing, that Jerry picked up right away, because he's been interviewed 100,000 times. So he picked up that he was not dealing with a good interviewer. It's probably some young guy. He was just being rude, though. He was rude. They just send rude. over. And I think he's rude to people that he doesn't respect their skill level, which is probably a compliment to you. He probably thinks you're a good comic. I don't even know. No, but I, if you I, hadn't performed well, he probably would have been like, fuck you. Because at one point, he, it was, early in the interview, 
he says that he thinks he's great. He met, he met, uh, I met him before he saw me do stand-up. He was nice to me because I found out I was a comic. And the, the two times I've, I've, uh, I, I talked to him before, he saw me perform. And then when I saw him after, he was nice. Um, but, but, it, but it was just one of those things. If I was interviewing, it might have been different. It was a very brief interaction. It was mm-hmm. Adderose. He's the fucking... But he wasn't was cranky? No, he was, I guess, happy in that situation. He's probably where he wants to be. Yeah. With a bunch of, you know, performers. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, in, in your house, you're probably annoyed that there's people in there. You're tired. When you're 90, you just get cranky. But I, he was really not polite to this guy. For, and this guy didn't do anything to deserve being treated like a piece of shit. No, of course not. And this, but but sometimes you know, as they, sometimes you got to roll the dice and just go. You're being a dick, dude. Yeah. You're being really rude. Yeah. And then know that he's going to end the interview and immediately throw you out. He's not going to apologize. His people are going to step in and go. Interview's over. And he's going to go. You shouldn't have done it to begin with. You can also play back though. Like he he's not playing back at all. Like you got to hit it. You can hit him back a little bit. You you can't just you you don't have to just go from I'm asking questions to hey you're being an asshole. You can you Maybe can start to hit limit. him back a little bit. Yeah. And the interview didn't do that at all. No, he didn't. Let's listen to some of it. It's like uh, and, seven minutes. And how great is the Hollywood Reporter? You can hit play. There's an intro. Why? They call him. They call him. An awkward interview. It is left the seven where, minutes. Well, they should have just said uh, Jerry Lewis is very rude. You don't have to pause. I'll just. No, go on. It's just an all intro. It's not that. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was. We're doing a feature on people who are still working in their 90s. Have you ever thought about retiring? Why? Well, uh, was there never a moment? You see it like right there. It might be time to... Like, that's, he's already thrown off. Because when he goes, have you ever thought about retiring? And Jerry Lewis goes, why? He didn't answer. He go, well, because, blah, 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 blah. He tries to rephrase a new question as if he's going to win Jerry Lewis over. And I think literally in that moment, Jerry's like, okay, I fucking hate this guy. I totally agree. Because... Because even I can think of something like, why? well, why? Because Well, because you're, you're 90, you have all the money in the world. Right. You have no reason to be doing this anymore. Like, that's where you would... I mean... Jerry Lewis is a cocksucker, <laughs> extraordinaire. Yeah. Like he's these he's a terrible person. But I think in his in his angry brain that that's what happens. He resents people who don't master their craft the way he feels that he's mastered his craft. That may be true, but after one question <laughs> this guy didn't deserve that. Maybe f- no. if this was a minute in... He doesn't deserve it after this is seven minutes of it. But meaning, so that this couldn't be about his skill level because he was a dick to him after, have you ever thought of retiring? That's a fair first question with the pieces on people who are in their 90s and still working. No, there's no question. Like, we're not, we're not justifying... Jerry Lewis is a, the reason he's a dick is because he's a dick. Yeah. Like, he's a mean old man, Jerry there's, Lewis. So there's he's no way this guy could have won him over. But in Jerry Lewis's head... Oh, but he doesn't think he's a dick. He doesn't think he's a dick, and he resents people, I think, that he doesn't think are good. Maybe. Retire, you would want... Why? <laughs> you, come from a, you come from a generation a little older, and I think of Bob Hope, George Burns, Sinatra, people you knew, many of whom didn't want to, uh, or never retired either. Um, do you see similarities with them? None. None? <laughs> what do you think drives... <laughs> people like you and, and them to want to keep working because we do it well and how about he um, wants him out of his house what um what's different about performing now for you than say 20 years ago how is it how is it different for you it isn't <laughs> not, at all. not at all um have you made any do you have to make any concessions to being you know, o- older in your oh. performing, or does it? How do you keep the material fresh for yourself? By working at it. Hit pause for a second. Do you think that that's true, Jim? You've been performing stand up for a while. Do you think that uh, when you're 90, if you're still performing, and I ask you what's the difference between now and then, you'll say there isn't one? There's a lot of differences. <laughs> and the similarities between him and Bob Hope, I'm sure if he had fished in his brain, there's a lot of similarities. You think so? Yeah, that's a desire to not be irrelevant. It's if, it's, as Richard Pryor said when he was on fire, if I stop, I'll die. That's what you feel like when you're that old. I'm sure you love doing it. So there are interesting answers to these questions. It makes you feel vital and alive, of course. There are So there are directions you could go in. Um, a lot. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> he decided to go in none. I, I think he just chose to give the bare minimum, not straight answer. Right. And he's going, how many questions could this guy possibly have if yeah. I can just give real quick answers? <laughs> it's not even like comparison between you and Bob Hope. Well, we're both performers. That's one, that's one thing that you guys have in common. But instead he goes with none. Yeah, he's uh, like Rickles never would have done. Jerry Lewis to me was never nearly as funny as a lot of those guys. I understand his legendary status. Mm -hmm. He never made me laugh. I mean, uh, Rickles to me is hilarious mm -hmm. and nice. Don right. Rickles wouldn't talk to you this way. Which is hilarious based on how like Don Rickles has made his money and Jerry Lewis has made his money. You'd yeah, think it'd be the opposite way around. One has been very goofy and was seen as a sidekick to Dean Martin. And again, in King of Comedy, which is probably a, a very true depiction of Jerry Lewis, yeah. he was hilarious. I mean, he's yeah. a funny dude. He's not a... He's a he's comedically, he's very talented, but fucking Rickles funnier for decades and would never do this to you. No. Never. Even if he was cranky, he might make fun of you, but he would never be this much of a cocksucker. Bust balls and snap them yeah. out. What's, um, what's amazing is when you watch stuff like this, there's always the moment where it starts out bad and if a guy's being a cocksucker, he kind of comes to that realization and he kind of gets better as it goes. Yeah. Like, okay, let me stop. Let me stop being an asshole. That just never occurs to Jerry. I wonder what... Uh, he would have said if he goes, have you ever thought of retiring? And if he just said, why? Because you're old. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at you. Yeah, look at you. You're old. <laughs> I don't probably know. Geriatric. It probably would have gotten a zero. <laughs> Jeff Ross probably could have got. See, like, he probably would have enjoyed Jeff. Like, Jeff Ross has a way with these older guys. They really love Jeff. Yeah. Like, he probably could have salvaged us into something funny by making fun of him. Yeah, but Jeff is also like the king of coming up with a one-liner in any yeah. situation that people are going to find funny. Yeah. The guy who interviews people for Hollywood Reporter doesn't exactly have that skill set. Yeah. He's not they, even a conversationalist. They did, by the way, interview Don Rickles for this. And I bet he was much different. Yeah. Was there, is there a video of seven minutes of the most awkward interview ever with Don Rickles? No. Just a... Here's just, our Hollywood just, reporter just an interview. interview. You yeah. know, Don Rickles, you know. Reflecting wow. on his time. Tore him apart and, you know. Did he make fun of him? Yeah. <laughs> of course he did. Yeah. But, you know, he did it in the Don Rickles way. Yeah. yeah. He didn't do it in a way of like, what the fuck are you doing in my house? No, not at all. You I, don't even deserve to be talking to me. I told you when I, when I saw him uh, in Montreal... He remembered me from the Tonight Show because he had watched me do it. He, he was on, I did a piece for Loud, a street piece. And then he, uh, he's like, uh, he says backstage, he was like, good, good, good piece, Jimmy. He was very nice to me. Oh, that's nice. And I saw Montreal years later. He's like, well, I know you. He didn't remember exactly where I'm like, we did let him. He goes, that's right. You do me better than I do me. <laughs> and he left. Did that make you happy? It did. Yeah, of course. There's Jerry Lewis. My whole like, story. Who are you? Yeah. I don't think he knows me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure everyone else that they interviewed was nice and accommodating. Betty White was probably a charmer. And they did Betty White. They did Stan Lee, Norman Lear, Dick Van Dyke. Oh, Norman Lear. He's like 94. Dick Van Dyke, I'd love to interview, man. Betty White didn't throw them out of her house? Nope. Carl Reiner. Wow. How old Carl Reiner? I think he's 90. Really? Cloris Leachman. I can't oh, believe damn. she's 90. We had Cloris Leachman in here, didn't we? No. No. We didn't. And Glenn Close. No. Who's the other? Uh, Who's the other old bag? No, not Cloris Leachman. It was another. Judy Gold. That's who it was. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, yeah, there's uh, some old. Jim Gaffigan. Old female comic. Uh, let's go back to Jerry Lewis. You've had uh, a number of, of health issues over the last few years, as many people your age do. Anyone that's 90 does. Anyone that's 90 does. Um, continuing to work, does that, does that actually help you get healthier? You know, does being... It's a fine question. ...and engaged, do you think that actually helps you get, get healthier? No. <laughs> do you think it hurts? Like, do you, do you think... No. <laughs> so what Jerry Lewis is, uh, is getting across here is that his material, medically, doesn't uh, impact him whatsoever. Jerry Lewis, literally, the eye contact he's given this guy... He's 100% comfortable right now being Jerry a cocksucker. Is? Yeah, yeah, he, he doesn't mind. <laughs> he doesn't mind. Jim, like, have you, you've been sick before, right? Yeah. Do you feel like when you do stand-up, when you have a set, if you have something, does it help you get through it? Does it help you get healthier? I wouldn't say it helps you get through it, but the adrenaline, if you're feeling sick before you go on, the adrenaline a lot of times will get you through the set and you feel better for an hour, and it's hard to explain how it happens. That okay. would be the answer. So there get. is a way to answer that question. Yeah. 
But, you know, I'm shitting blood. There's probably no material <laughs> I can fucking fix that. You've had health issues. Everybody does. Everyone who's been 90 does. Yeah, it's true about that. I'd love to know what the health issues are. I don't know if we get to the details. Well, let's keep listening. We might get to the details. Yeah. yeah. That's a cool sweater, though. You like that? The red and the yellow? Yeah. Who knew Jerry Lewis was a Hulkamaniac? I was in a, um, I, I was in, I'm in a book of comedian photos, and the guy who took my photo, he took two photos of me. They were funny, too. They were weird. Uh -huh. And he also had Jerry Lewis in his book, and he showed me the picture he took of Jerry Lewis. Uh -huh. I think he was wearing, he had a red clown nose on, and the guy, he, the guy had a very brief time with him. Jerry did it, though, but he had a very brief amount of time, and he goes, like, they, they set it up, and Jerry sat down, and goes, all right, this is what you get, and he put the clown nose on, and the guy took his picture, uh, <laughs> and, but it was a cool picture. Yeah, I'm like, sure. We're, we just tweeted out the interview, by the way, if you want to watch some of this, it's at Jim and Sam Show on Twitter. Red and yellow, good, comp good colors for an older man. Jerry Lewis is sitting there in his, what looks to be his office, and he's got a red sweater with a yellow polo under it. Word him up, Doc. And he's just sitting there. Giving the fucking uh, uh, Hollywood Reporter a very difficult time. Oh, Am I the boy. only one that thinks this is an orange sweater? You might be right. This is like the new, is it blue? <laughs> is it gold? <laughs> it I just nothing can't like tell. Red to me. It's orange. Yeah, is it it's orange? orange? Oh, okay. Looks red to me. Aren't yeah. you glad I guessed wrong? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go back to the thing. Yeah, you're right. It's orange. It looks. It's hard to say orange or red. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you... <laughs> um, <laughs> You've been coming to Vegas for a, a. You've lived here for a while. You've been coming here for a long time. How is Vegas different for you than when you first came here? When was the first time you you performed in Vegas? Nineteen forty-seven. What can you tell me? What what Vegas was like when you first showed up? It's not. It's the same. <laughs> it's the same. Exactly the same. They made they made an entire movie. Called Casino. It's much different. About how much Vegas changed over the years. Yeah. It was mafia run. Buildings were all different. Yeah. Lots of buildings since 1947 it's have been demolished. It's now, and the mob ran it back then. Yeah. Much different. <laughs> no, no, no. Jim, I hate to correct you. You know I don't like to do that. But I heard from Jerry Lewis, who's a bit of an expert. Vegas is exactly the same as it was in 1947. Well, the one little jab the guy does throw is coming up. It's not even a good one, but he does he does give him a little bit of a shitty response. All right, let's see. Let's see. Like what what is it about Vegas that you like or what is it about like how, how would you describe the the place? Like when you show up and like, staring at him. What was it? Dry mouth. It wasn't a little bit of a dusty cow town. It was what was it? What was it like? A dusty cow town. <laughs> and do you still think of it as a sort of dusty cow town? No. And how about? Um, so I guess it's not the same. Right, that was the only little jab. That, that, That's the only little jab. Oh, he what he said. Do you, you still think of it as a dusty cow town? Like it's the only shot he's had at calling him an asshole right there. Yeah, he could have at least said. You just said. So. Well, then I guess it's not the same, is it? And Jerry would have oh. been like, "No, I guess not." Right, that's like, all he would have said. <laughs> but at least you would have gotten that in. Like he didn't really get that one in. No, he didn't. Dusty cow town. <laughs> so, what'd you think of it? It's like a dusty cow town. Yep, it was a dusty cow town. He's just sitting there. He goes, "What did you like about Vegas?" And there's this pause. Pekas. Jerry Lewis. That's probably what he's thinking. He's just staring. He's staring pekas at him, <laughs> not daggers. I made fun of his sweater. Jerry Lewis's sweater. Hey, it's orange and yellow. What are you, the fucking? One of the McDonaldland characters or something. <laughs> McDonald's is right. Hey, you're right like a nutty professor. <laughs> McDonald's. 90, what did you just go make poop in your socks or something? In your socks? Crush that cocksucker. Yeah, well, if only had this the interviewer had the wit <laughs> that one Chip Chipperson does. <laughs> Poor guy. Maybe we'd be able to get there. Oh, yeah. it's not even halfway over. <laughs> no, it's not. No, no. I he did love quit. this. Oh. I'll tell you, the interviewer it has no quit in him. He's getting his questions out there. Dude, it's hard when a guy on this legendary status is being a total cunt. Yeah, I he probably you. thought that he was going to have a 30-minute chat. Yeah. Yeah, all these questions, that's at least 30 to 60 minutes. I'm not even going to be able to get through all these questions. I would love it if Jerry Lewis came in here and that's the version we got. That I would absolutely. You know, Buzz Aldrin, you know, no. it's funny. Buzz Aldrin was kind of crappy and a little snippy, but he did answer questions. He right. got a little snippy, but Buzz Aldrin, I would be very, very hard to be rude to because he's contributed 
He's, he's one of the few people that is, he's such a contributor to our, our species. Because he went to space? I just, I, I, fuck him. I'll have, to, I'll have to take that one. Right. I, I got to take it if he's rude. Uh, maybe I would call him out in some way, but I would never be rude to him. I just couldn't be. But, you know, Jerry Lewis is a different story. You don't mind being rude to Jerry? I would never want to be rude to Jerry Lewis. He's, but if he were rude to you. Uh, yeah. If he were this level abs- rude to abs- you. Ab- without 100% rude, yes. I would really enjoy that confrontation. Yeah, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't. It wouldn't feel good. It wouldn't feel good. For me, it would. Yeah, I know. But as a comic, it's not a big, tough target to fucking argue with a 90-year-old. I know. being a dick. Yeah, what if the 90-year-old is is looking at you like a cocksucker, you know? Yeah. Buzz Aldrin's different. Guy fucking, you know. Went to the moon? Yeah. You should say fake that, though. Oh, that's true. I mean, I don't think it's that big of a deal. <laughs> he's yeah, just an he's actor. just a guy. He's on a soundstage But you know what I mean? There's certain people that... There's certain people in life that you might tolerate that from, like... This guy is literally going to have to spit on me for me to be really nasty to him. But Jerry Lewis doesn't qualify as, at that level. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm sure. He's not like, Buzz Aldrin. Yeah. I wouldn't. I, I, would, I don't have that kind of reverence for Buzz Aldrin. If he were being rude to me, I'd probably have to be rude back. I don't really care that he went to space. It doesn't yeah. mean he can be rude to me. That's not nice. I, I, it doesn't mean. You're right. It doesn't. But I mean, there's certain times where you're like. <sighs> yeah. No, th- I'm sure that there are people. Everybody's got their people. I'm sure if Vince McMahon came in here and was acting like a piece of shit to me, I'd be like, yeah, you're probably right to do that, Vince. You're right over that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. For me, but it's just simply a contribution level. Yeah. I just couldn't. What if an ex-president was doing it? What if, uh, what if George H.W. Bush was treating you like a piece of garbage? It'd be easier for me to be responsive, to respond appropriately to an ex-president than it would Buzz Aldrin. Really? Yeah, because they, he's contributed to human history in a weird level. He's the I fucking, guess, li- so like, literally, literally 5,000 years from now, uh-huh. when they say the first man on space, it'll be Neil and Buzz. Like, his picture, that picture will still be talked about 5,000 years from now. What if Richard Branson flies the first commercial thing into space? It's a little different. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> I, although I like Virgin. If, I, if, if you would upgrade me to first, I'd right. be very polite. <laughs> he still has a purple light inside the spaceship, right? <laughs> that is true. Yeah, yeah. And again, if Buzz was a total cut, maybe I'd be, who knows. But right. I'm just saying, the time he was in there, I didn't want to be mean back to him. It's tough, though. I mean, Buzz was... Old guys are different, man. They are different. But Buzz was, like, so much better than Jerry oh, is yeah, in this yeah, yeah. interview. I can't imagine anybody being this bad to either one of us and either one of us just accepting it. Probably not. I mean, he's in really the, being an asshole. Yeah. Think of it as a sort of dusty cow town? No. <laughs> and how about um, is performing in Vegas now for you different than it was then? Like just either the mechanics or the size of the. No. Not at all. <laughs> and how about um, what's your audience like? You know, now you're, you're still performing, you're 90. What, what's, your, what's your audience like? Who are your. Who this guy's just filling it with. He's trying to find the they, perfect question. Than they used to be? No, nope, they're still the same. How could they possibly Even, be the same? You must have younger fans. Who, Some are younger. Uh, what do you think it is? Do you have any that that uh, attracts you to younger fans? Like, like how have you sort of the guys trying? He your, really is your audience over the years. You tell them you're playing there, and they show up. Well, <laughs> I, I would have an argument about that. <laughs> you think based on your own personal history, that it's not could, necessarily true, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, you could argue that point. Yeah, sometimes you tell me you're playing there and they don't care. <laughs> but that's his vibe. He's just like, I'm really good at what I do. So unless you're really good at what you do, get the fuck away from me. Yeah. Who knows? I don't know what his health issues are either. Same health issues as any 90-year-old. I mean, like, you don't know what kind of news he got from a doctor that morning. or like There might be other shit going on, but... Oh, no, he's just cranky. I think you're right. But How great would that be if a doctor right before this interview had just told him he had three months to live, and he's got to spend ten minutes of his three months in this interview. Yeah. He's pissed. His grandkids are in the next room and wants to hug him. Yeah. <laughs> no. How about, do you have a... You've had a, a long and distinguished career. I love, by the way, yeah. part that, that half the questions are now starting out with how about. Like he's like, as if he's That's just true. testing yeah, he is. them. Like, how about this question? What do you how think, about this Jack? Question? Comment, How Jerry? about this question? Yeah. Like, it's, it's almost not, he's not asking how about as in what do you think of this. He's like, how about will you answer this question? Yeah. Is this one that relates to you at all? A favorite period of your career, a, a, a part of your career you look back on as as a moment when you were um, what's favorite happiest or your most creative 
What do you mean? <laughs> is there a period in your career that you look back on where you that was your your happiest time or your favorite time? When my partner was alive. When your partner was alive. So working with with D Martin was that your favorite? Yep. Uh, part of your your career. Yep. And what what made that partnership work for you? Like what was? I'll show you some material. You'll know. But. If I'm not looking at the material, can you give me like a sense of like what how it worked for you, Jim? When you're when you're talking it about like terrific material, like comedy material, if I watch it, would I get why it's good? Is there any sort of if I'm watching your jokes, is there anything that you could add that I wouldn't get just from watching it? Um. No, you'd get everything you need. <laughs> everything. Right? Yeah, you'd get very, you'd get everything you need. To be uh, to be so arrogant as to go watch the material, you'll know. Yeah, and he oh. goes. It's terrific. Yeah, fuck man. Oh, oh boy, I love it. He said Dean was. He loved it. I just think here's what I think when he goes, "What do you mean?" He knew what he meant. He was just trying to fuse. He, he needed the question phrase where he could give a one word answer. Right. Right. He didn't want to have a conversation. Yeah, because yeah. he thought about that response yeah. for a while. Yeah. So he was thinking, okay, how can I answer this like an asshole? Yeah, now his agenda is just kind of to be a goose. And what is the shortest way possible to answer that question yeah. where there is no follow-up? P -p -p pecka Exactly. And how about you have any advice for the young... Young eighty-year-olds about staying active at, <laughs> at ninety. <laughs> he was trying. You could Get tell day the, job. Way, the way he stuttered on young. You could totally tell that he was like, "Oh, I had this." He had that question planned, like it was a little joke. But he thought by that point in the interview, God, that'd be friends. There'd be a nice camaraderie back and forth. Yeah. And instead, it, it, that's <laughs> that's why he stuttered on it. Because for a second, he was like, "I'm not going to do this joke," and he was like, "Fuck it." I'm going to do it. Maybe. Oh, he's, he's a last-ditch effort at making him laugh. Yeah, maybe Jerry will like it. Maybe he'll enjoy it. He didn't. Can you go young, back? To, go be, oh, there you go, sir. Young 80-year-olds about staying active at, at 90, just sort of... Get a day job. Get, get a day job. But mm -hmm. you, you've never had a... You've never actually had a, a quote, day job. You've been a, a performer your, your whole life. Isn't that right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> And you just um, you just did a movie a couple years ago. Just is coming out. Max Rose. What was it like to step behind? What movie? Uh, Max Rose, right? Yeah, I'm glad you remembered it. <laughs> uh, what was it like performing again after not having done it for for uh, more than a decade? It's great. Oh, was it? Is it like riding a horse? You never forget. What was it? You never forget. Is that the expression not riding was a it, horse, isn't it? Isn't was it at all a bike? riding a bike? Scary or intimidating? You could forget how to ride a horse. Not at all. Not at all. And the interviewer is also, like, giving him answers. Yeah. Right. Right. Was it good or, or bad? Good. or Oh, okay, okay. And like did riding you... a horse, riding a horse. Yeah. Yeah, he's just swinging for the face. He doesn't know what to do. No, he's panicking. He's never had a guy be this much of a dick to him. I don't know if anybody's ever had a guy be this much of a dick to him. Yeah. This might be the most dickish a guy has ever been to an interviewer. Yeah. And the reason is because the interviewer won't quit. Like any other interview that's gone like this, it's over within 90 seconds, two minutes. There's never been an eight-minute interview like this. Of course, you never forget. What was it? You never forget. And was, it, was it at all scary or intimidating to, to come by? Not at all. Not at all? And you enjoyed it? Would you do another movie? Absolutely. We're planning one now. For you to star in? Mm hmm. <laughs> are you also, I think I read that you were, you're also still writing some screenplays or doing work. Right. Is that right? Yep. Is it, is it easier now to, to write a screenplay? No, just as hard. Just, just as hard. And how about do you, you take some time each day to, to write or, or how do you, do you, do you do it in a dictaphone? How do you do? If I tell you, you'll be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, oh, I think oh, you actually, like, what an yeah. asshole! Yeah. <laughs> like he gave his joke a laugh. The guy, the interviewer, 
had no business giving Jerry Lewis's joke a laugh. The right. way this conversation is exactly. gone. Like, don't laugh at his shit. This is where you just got to say you're you're a really rude guy. Yeah. You're you, a rude guy. Yeah. Have you been rude? How long? That's when you, you started skewing. Okay, you know, you're 90 now. Have you been this awful for a long time? Have you been this rude to people forever? Well, what do you mean? Well, you've been a terrible person the entire time we've been talking. Yeah, you've done a pretty, uh, pretty lousy this entire interview. Yeah, yeah. And I've been courteous to you. Is this the way it always is? So if you didn't want to do the interview, just cancel the fucking thing. Right. Put me out of my misery. And Jerry just mockingly laughs at him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's my second favorite. My favorite part's the end, but that's my second favorite part. Okay. Especially because he thinks, he goes, okay, I got Jerry Lewis to make a joke. Now I'll laugh at the joke, and we have something in common. There's finally some warmth to this conversation. And then he just mocks him. Like, what do you do? You really think that you're good enough to laugh at one of my jokes? No, what Jerry was doing was he didn't mean it to be a joke. If I tell you, you'll be doing it. It was just he didn't realize that that could be possibly misconstrued as funny. So when the, <laughs> when the guy when the guy chuckled, Jerry wanted to put a kibosh on that immediately. <laughs> it's tough for Jerry Lewis. This is not a flow, motherfuckers. Right. <laughs> He wants to figure out how to make this the, as as little have as little comedic value as humanly uh, possible. Yeah, boy, is he great? He's the, yeah, at being a dick. Yeah, he doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I meant the sort of mechanics of it. Do you actually yeah. like do you write by hand or do you you type it? How do you do it? You type it on the computer. Mm -hmm. And um. So what are your you're on tour now? What else do you have um, planned for for this year, ninetieth year? Mm -hmm. or, do you have anything else lined? The question was, what do you yeah, have planned? And he, his answer was, uh huh. About. The question was, what do you have planned for your ninetieth year? He goes, mm hmm. Nothing we want to talk about. Nothing we want to talk about. Uh, oh, Jerry. Yeah. You're on tour now. What else do you have um, planned for? For this year, ninetieth year. Anything else, line? Yeah, but nothing we want to talk about. Um, and so you've worked with a lot of a lot of people over the years. What do you have any favorite story about, like Dean or or Frank Sinatra or somebody that you that you worked with? You're not going to get a story, over dude. Over the years that you like to share. No. <laughs> Not <at all>. None. <laughs> How about you have an unfavorite story you'd like? Nope. Not for this. So what? I guess we're finished. Sure. Anything else you want to? No. So we're finished. Sure. Thank you. I wonder who's saying we're finished. Was that the Hollywood Report? People going fuck this right, guy? Clean or it. It. Hang on. That's what I'll do here. I'm sorry. Go back. Go back. Sure. Thank you. Huh? Yeah. All right, clean it out of here. <laughs> he doesn't want them there. Get the fuck out. Clean it out of here. Get out. I thought he was going to say clean up the interview, but he's not even. He doesn't care. No. He doesn't care what you do with the interview. Just get out of my house. Just leave me alone. Uh, do you have any stories? No. Any unfavorite stories? No, not for this, he said. Not for this. Who ended, I want to know who ended it. I wonder if that was the Hollywood Reporter I'm or Jerry's people. I would imagine it was the Hollywood Reporter. I think it was his. It was the guy's editor being like, dude, you can get out of here. Like, Enough of this dick. Let's cut this. Yeah, we're, we're done. We're he should have been. I, but at that point, after seven minutes. Yeah. Uh, Andy wrote that Jerry hated his photo shoot. The photographers, the crew personnel, and basically everything that happened before the interview portion never got started. What are you people doing, he asked. Uh, and that's where it started. Yeah, wow, he was a real dick in that. Yeah, it really was. He was in a bad mood. Yeah, but you still got to, you know, you got to give something. We're just, or don't do it. Right. Just don't do it. Right. But, I mean, the interviewer, I don't think, did his job either. The inter he's got to acknowledge, and maybe it's a different kind of interview, but whatever, it's for print. Like, at some point, you have to acknowledge the conversation that's going on in the room. However, that's what's happening. no one's talking about any other interview but Jerry Lewis. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no one cares about Betty White, even Rickles. No, doesn't matter. Carl Reiner, who cares? 
Jerry Lewis did well at, at, at I, I mean, at promoting, but he didn't give any projects to promote. What are you working on? Nothing we want to talk about. Who's we? we. Yeah, we, the team. The yeah. Jer- team, team Jerry. Yeah, me and the Grim Reaper. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, James in Canada. Welcome to Jim hey. and Sam Roberts. Jim Norton, Sam Boo, the bad guy, Roberts. How are you guys doing? Good, Hi, James. I'm James, too. Good. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Sam, we got to say congratulations on the WWE gig. That was awesome to oh, watch. Thanks. Thanks, man. Uh, but, yeah, this show has taught me a, a number of things, and, and one of them that I'm now learning is what a bad interview looks like. We got the Nancy Grace. We got the Gary Busey. Whoa. Uh, we got this one. Gary and Busey, now, bad interview. Now, now, hold on. There was one more that I wanted to add to the list that I thought about while I was on hold, and that's got to be the Brock Lesnar. Oh, yeah, my Brock Lesnar interview didn't go terribly well. I mean, oh. I loved it. No, nah, it was fine. It was kind of funny, though. Yeah. That was funny. That was incredible. And that was his character. That was a funny one. Yeah. Yeah, I was happy the way it turned out. Yeah. But again, oh, well, just, I probably everybody wanted... who was listening was happy it turned out that way. <laughs> Someone said on Twitter, check out Jim Rome, uh, uh, Chris, uh, Jim Everett interview because he kept calling him Chrissy. That was nowhere near as bad as this. Jim Rome, no, Jim, that was Jim just Everett combative. had a reason not to like Jim Rome. Yeah, yeah. Jim Rome was being combative. They didn't like time. each like, other. Yeah, I've seen that a hundred times. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, a, that's a totally a, different deal. Totally different. Jim Rome's an asshole. This isn't like going in and the subject of the interview being like, I don't want to be here. You know, and that was, you know, Nancy Grace didn't mind being here. She just didn't like the questions that we asked her. And uh, Busey is just Busey. Yeah, it's totally different. <laughs> this is a different level. This Jim Jim Everett had a reason to not be happy. Yeah. You, play, you want to play it? No, Thanks, people. buddy. He is now playing for that we team. We could, but I mean, it's just up. a fight to happen. about the new New Orleans Saints quarterback, Jim Everett. There's the game winner right there. All right. All right, that was then, and this is now. He's now a member of the Saints. Jim, good to have you on the show. Good to be here, Jim. Thank you. Check that. Chris Everett, good to have you on the show. You know what? You know, oh. you've been calling me that for about the last five years. About yeah. two years, actually, Chris. Well, hey, you know what? Let me, let me say one thing. In that game, how many sacks did I have that we came back and won? How many sacks did you yeah, have? In that game, how many sacks? Let's see, but this was back in 1989. Right, so you may have even been Jim Everett back there, but somewhere along the way, Jim, you ceased being Jim and you became Chris. Well, let me tell you a little secret. That... You know, we're sitting here right now, and if you guys want to take a station break, you can. But if you call me Chris Everett to my face one more time, I already did it twice. Better, you better you call it one more time. We better st- take a station break. Well, it's a five-minute segment, a five-segment show. We got a long way to go. Well, we do. We got a long way to go. We do. I'll get a couple segments out well, of you. It's good it. to be here with you, though. Well, it's good you to know, see you too. You've been talking like this behind my back for a long but time. But now I said it right here. Right. Exactly. Well, we got no problem. Well, I with think that. It, I think that you you probably won't say it again. I bet I do. Okay. Chris? Yeah, that's Good like... Good for him. Yeah, when a, when, a, when a big athlete says, don't say that, don't insult me to my Jim face. Jim Rohn being a jerk off. Yeah, that's... I mean, that to, like, I, yeah, I don't think you, you should always, You should ever... You can't really attack a person. You got to fight back verbally if he's hitting you verbally, but he was being a cocksucker. Too. Yeah, and if somebody's like needling you, because they know Why, you... What want. was the deal with them? Does anybody know? Like, Did he just not like Jim Everett? Like, What was the... Well, he's making fun... He was calling him... No, I, Chris, I, I understand why, Jim but... Jim Rome tries too hard. Huh? Yeah. Jim Rome tries Jim, too hard. Jim Rome's an asshole. He is an asshole? Uh, what? Yeah, Jim Everett was, was not playing well. So he's comparing to Chris Everett, the female tennis player. He was yeah. Just because he was having a bad season? Well, he's calling yeah, him a girl. He was, he, was fucking, he was fucking with him. Yeah. Okay, but there's no other personality thing between them. Uh, he'd been doing it for a while. Yeah, he just kept calling him a girl. And he's like, fuck... And then... A big athlete is like, you've been calling me a girl. Knock it off, and then don't say it to my face again. And if you say it to his face again, that's a... Okay, well, now we got to fight. Like, and, what Jim else Everett, we do? and Jim Everett was willing to have a real chat with him. He goes, oh, it's good to be here. Yeah. yeah but then he amended it. He goes, Chris. Right. Right. He gave him two. Well, he's trying to be... He gave him two, and then he was like, he was like one more. And I like, what else yeah, is he going to do? He's know, gotta, at that point, he's got to knock the table over and fight him. But that, yeah, that's... Did they ever make up or no? I'm kind of curious about it. That's a very classic tape. Yeah, it is. I think they may have. I don't know. Um, Did they ever make love? I, probably not. I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew in Jersey. <laughs> hey, guys. I don't know if you know what Jerry Lewis was doing before him and uh, Dean Martin hooked up. No. It's kind of like right place, right time. But uh, basically, he would go on stage and play records and kind of like lip sync to them like like an Andy Kaufman kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And that was basically his whole act. I mean, to be this pompous, I mean, that's where you started out. It's amazing. And I have another question for Jim. Uh, 
you know, uh, him and Dice were together on that uh, show, Wise Guys. Did they ever? Uh, did he ever talk about Jerry Lewis at all? I was never on Wise Guy. Mm. No, but I'm talking about Dice. You're friends with Dice. Oh, did he ever did talk? Dice about, ever talk about Dice? Jerry? Likes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dice likes Jerry Lewis a lot, man. He, um, you know, the Nutty Professor Andrew used to do him in his act. But I, anytime I'd ever heard his name come up, Andrew really looks up to him. So it was, it was always positive. Yeah, yeah. I can't think. Thanks, buddy. I can't think of another interview because there are some interviews where it's just personalities kind of contrast and it gets weird. And there are some interviews where it's stuff like that happens, where it's obviously like an attack. It's a totally different deal. I can't think of another interview, especially the last eight minutes, where a guy was just being a dick the whole time. By the way, a big burger franchise wanted to use that Jim uh, ever Jim Rome tape mm -hmm. for something, and Jim Everett said sure, and Jim Rome blocked the deal. Of course, Jim Rome did. He was humiliated. Pussy. He is a pussy. That's a pussy move. Because he because he was sitting there. Even I, who run my mouth a lot, like when a guy goes, say it again, and I'll. And I'm going to have to do something about it. It's like, okay, at some point you can't act like you're a fucking tough guy because right, right, you right. think that a guy is not allowed to hit you, yeah. you know? You know. And 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 if he does, if he does shove you to the ground, it's like, okay, yeah, I kind of, I was asking for it. I had it coming. If that's the moment you want, then that's fine. But then kind of own that. Don't be like, oh, I, I can't believe he did that, you know? Stupid. It's a great I love, tape. Uh, it really is good. It really is good, and it is everywhere. Everybody's talking about Jerry Lewis's interview today. Yeah, everyone. Yeah. I don't even know why. Like, I wouldn't want my name on it, but at the beginning of the video, it has the name of the interviewer. Who is that? Andy Martin. Andy Martin, I guess is his okay. name, whatever, whoever was doing it. I probably would not prefer to have my name associated with it. Word. If I was interviewing off camera. I don't need that. It is, it is also like, it's supposed to be a print interview, right? Pretty much. Uh, yeah, it's print, and then there's video for, for each person. But they're not going to, for each person, they're not airing the entire interview. No, like Don Rickles is like two minutes. S sound bites and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So it's him not being fun. Yeah, you hockey puck. <laughs> <laughs> Having, being Rickles. Andy Lewis. Andy Lewis. Andy Lewis. That's fine. Doesn't matter.